mother ya roho shwa amen i want to thank god for his faithfulness and for this opportunity even to be in this fellowship i've been here once and now glad that the lord has given me another opportunity that we may fellowship together one of the things that paul writes he says that we should not neglect the gathering of one another we should never neglect fellowship it doesn't matter how busy we are and how busy we could be if there is something that we must always fight to have it is that fellowship praise the lord and so i want to thank god that he has given us this opportunity even to come and just fellowship together and worship God together and share the word of God together it is a great blessing my name is william yedeji wawashira i am born again and by god's grace i am a bishop of a ministry called victor's chapel back in kenya in karatina i'm visiting here uh, for a few days and then i'll be back home in like two weeks uh, before I share the word of God, I have one of my books, uh, Restoration of Time. Um, the Lord spoke to me some time about how he is able to restore time. One of the things we've been taught ever since we were young, and, and we love repeating that and saying it, is that once time is gone, it can never be recovered. And, and that has become a basis of a lot of frustration a lot of hopelessness in so many people because we, we discover that when one one discovers that he has lot a lot of time a lot of opportunities they become hopeless they become desperate they become depressed no wonder many people are committing suicide these days because they've got into a time and they think they've lost all the time and they think they will never recover it but the lord showed me in the word that in the kingdom we are at, God is able to recover the years that have been wasted. Amen. In fact, he spoke through joy <coughs> and said, tell the children of Israel, the years that have been eaten by the canker worms or whatever has eaten those years, I can restore for you those years. Amen. And, and, and there's so many ways that God um, showed me in, it, in the scriptures and, and I put them in this book. You can get yourself a copy. Uh, after the service, it will only be 10 euro. I mean, 10, 10 dollars. Please stand with me in your Bible. I want to share very briefly in the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. Joshua. Chapter number 14. Joshua chapter number 14. I want to read from verses number 6. And this is what the Bible says. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the children of, we, and the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephna, the Kizinite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Benair. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Benair to spy out the light, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And so Moses saw on that day, saying, That surely the Lord where you, your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke these words to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness 
And now here I am this day, 85 years old. And as yet as, as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there and their cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Verse 13 says, And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb and the son of Jephne as an inheritance. And Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephna, the Kezinite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron, and the name of Hebron formerly was Kirja Adber. And I mean, uh, and okay, you can still read that. And the name of, of Hebron formerly was Kirja Adber. Adba was the greatest man among the other kings, and the lad had rest from war. It's such an honor to be in the presence of God at the beginning of the month of October. It's an honor. It's in the morning of the month of October. And one of the things that Job was told is that you need to learn to command your morning. And he was being asked, have you commanded your morning? Every time the Lord gives you a morning, whether it's a day or the morning of a month, the morning of a year, that early day of the, that early hour of the day, that early day of the month or of the year, make sure you command the morning and tell the day how you want it to be. Glory be to God. And what an honor to be in the presence of God at the beginning of October, we have three months to go for this year to close. And, and something the Lord laid in my heart that I want to deal with in these few minutes that we have is dealing with the spirit of delay. Dealing with delay. I want you to understand that the door that the Lord has opened, no devil or man can be able to close that door. Amen. And we get so happy when we rejoice that the door that the Lord has opened, no devil or man can be able to close. But I want you to know one thing the Lord said to me, the devil knows the scriptures. And because the devil knows that he cannot close that door, once the Lord has opened that door, he knows he cannot tamper with that door. So what does the devil do? And this is something the Lord said to me sometimes back, and I need to drop it in your heart as we deal with that spirit of delay. The devil knows now that I cannot stop you from entering the door that the Lord has opened for you, the best that I can do, I can delay you from entering that door. And therefore what happens is that the spirit of delay steps in and the door you were supposed to have entered maybe 10 years ago, some of us have not yet entered. Why? Because the spirit of delay stepped in and now we are not able to enter in the promise that God gave us. And we have so many people that are there hanging on and a promise. They believe what God spoke. God opened a sudden door. But they still wonder why has it not yet happened. I came in the name of the Lord to deal with that delay in the name of Jesus. So that the blessing that God had for you for 2018. You will not add 2018 without getting that blessing in the name of Jesus. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Come on, say no more delay. No, I didn't hear you. Say no more delay. Oh, if you need to understand, one day the Bible says God spoke to our father of faith, Abraham. And he said, Abraham, uh, your descendants are going to be in the land of bondage for 400 years.
many years. In other words, when God was speaking concerning the children of Israel, he had intended that they remain in Egypt for only 400 years. But I want to let you know that the spirit of delay stepped in. And when they were supposed to leave the promised land, the Bible says they stayed in the land of bondage. They stayed in Egypt for 430 years. In other words, the time of the promise came. The time when God had intended them to leave Egypt, the land of oppression, they still remained there. Being oppressed. But according to the diary of God, they were supposed to have left. Could it be tonight there is someone that is here, you're crying over something, and when God checks his records, he's like, excuse me, I thought I did this five years ago. I thought I opened that door ten years ago. I thought I did that miracle some years back. I came today in the name of Jesus to update your status in the name of Jesus. We came to arrest the spirit of delay. Every promise that the Lord has given you, every promise that the Lord has spoken concerning your life, concerning your children, concerning your career. We want to pray tonight in the name of the Lord that the Lord God is going to give it unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I read in the Bible a man called Jehu. Jehu, the Bible says, God sent Elijah and he said to Elijah, go and anoint Jehu to be the king of Israel. And I want you also to remind Elisha, he's going to take to become a prophet instead of you. That was the time God was getting ready to take Elijah up to heaven. He said, you need to anoint Jehu, you need to anoint Elijah, and you need to anoint Elisha. But the Bible says that Elijah went to heaven without anointing Jehu to be the king. He spoke to him in first Kings. But until 2 Kings chapter number 9, that's where we are seeing the prophet Elisha now sending another prophet. He's saying, go to Ramoth Gilead, look for one Jehu and anoint him to be a king. Why? Because he is operating as a captain of the army. Yet according to the diaries of God, he's supposed to be the king of Israel. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. And I'm going to ask you this question. Could that be, just maybe, the level you are operating in is not where God desires you to be? Mm -hmm, that's true. Could that be, you're there struggling in a situation and according to God, you are not supposed to be struggling in that situation. Mm -hmm. Come on, say no more delay. No more delay. Come on, say that you believe it. No more delay. I did hear you. No more the Bible talks about Joshua and Caleb, where we have read. And this is a story that is known to many of us. We will remember Moses sending some spies to go and spy the land of Canaan. And the Bible says among us, the 12 spies, there were two of these gentlemen, Joshua and Caleb. They were young. At that time, they were about 40 and the Bible says they spied the Lord. And we know the story because they spied the Lord. And when everyone else came with a bad report, Joshua and Caleb came with a good report. Mm -hmm. They said we are well able. They said if God is for us, we can take that land. Mm -hmm. They didn't listen to what everyone else was saying. Because listen to me church. If you're going to break the spirit of delay out of your life. You do not walk with the majority. You walk with what God is saying. A lot of us are delayed because we want to hear what everyone else is saying. What is the world saying? What is everybody saying? What is the multitude saying? Excuse me. I came to say the Lord can do it for you. You don't need anybody to pat your back. You can pat your back and believe that God is able to do and do it for you alone. Amen. And because Joshua and Caleb came with a good report, the Bible says Moses spoke the word of the Lord to Caleb. And he said, Caleb, 
Because you have come with a good report. The lad that you have spied. The mountain called Hebron. Shall be your inheritance. And the inheritance of your children. That was a promise from God. And I need you to know that anything God promises you. He means exactly that. If God said he will heal you. He means exactly that. If God said he will promote you, he means exactly that. Amen. There is no word the Lord just spoke to, you know, to encourage you. <laughs> He's not there to encourage you. Every word he speaks, he means exactly that. And he follows his word so that he may perform it. Amen. And so God spoke to Caleb. The Caleb, I'm going to give you this mountain. And Caleb is excited just like every one of us would get excited. When you're given a prophetic word. You know how you rejoice. Oh my God. God just said he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. He was excited. But wait a minute. Where we have read. Today. It is. 45 years later. Mm -hmm. 45 years later, he has not stepped in his promise. 45 years later, Joshua has already taken his place after Moses. But Caleb is looking at his life and he's saying there is something that is missing. And so the Bible says the children of Judah led by Caleb they came to Joshua. Joshua was the lead man that time. He was the prophet at that time. He is the one God had a name at that time. And they come to him. And Caleb begins to remind Joshua. He says, you are there. You are my witness that there is a promise that God gave me. You are my witness. That there is a word. That's not happened in my life. I don't know who I came to speak to at the beginning of October. But I come to pray in the name of Jesus. In a delay that has followed your family. In a delay that has followed your life. Be broken tonight. That the Lord may fulfill every promise that he has spoken concerning your life. Amen. Nobody loves delay. But I want you to know delay can keep you being a neighbor of your promise and not enter a promise. Mm -hmm. You're just hanging around the promise but not enjoying the promise. Mm -hmm. I refuse it in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Come on, say no more delay. No, no more delay. delay. My goodness, I saw a man in the Bible who was delayed for 38 years. Mm -hmm. He sat next to a pool, a pool where other people were getting their miracle and he remained there for 38 years. He would see others get their miracle but he would not get his miracle i pray from today you will not only hear other people give their testimonies you will give your testimony you will not only celebrate others you will also be celebrated Caleb comes to joshua and he says you are my witness and i know you have some witnesses who heard what the lord has said in your life Said you were there. I was 40 years old. When the Lord said. That he has given me this mountain. And he has kept me alive. Up to now. Oh, I love that statement. Mm. He has kept me alive. Mm. I came to assure you. The Lord has not kept you alive for nothing. Yeah. I said the Lord hasn't kept you alive for nothing. Yeah. He did fight those battles for you for nothing. There is a reason you are alive today. There is a reason that you are breathing today. And my prayer is in the name of the Lord. Everything the Lord intends you to fulfill. Everything the Lord intends you to do. You will be able to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not just alive for nothing. Oh. And because there is an assignment... And because there is a promise that God needs to fulfill, that's why the devil cannot kill you. Yes. I say you are unkillable. Yes. Let me say that again. You are unkillable. Yes. 
Why am I saying that? Because there is a promise that God has not fulfilled. And God won't want to take you to heaven and you question him. You say, Daddy, I thought you promised this thing and I was here at your mother. Anytime you have a promise, it becomes like an insurance, like a security for you. If you don't believe me, ask David. Because one day David is anointed in studio. You're going to be the king of Israel. But from that time, the bear came, the lion came, the Goliath came. And not only those, even Saul came throwing his spear. Why? There is a promise that was waiting to happen. I pray in the name of the Lord, you cannot die of that sickness. You cannot die of that accident because there is a promise that God needs to fulfill in your life. Amen. God, they may say, I was 40. Now I'm 85. And the Lord has kept me alive. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you many have died. In actual fact, all the people that were with Caleb and Joshua at that time, all of them had been buried. All of them were dead. And the people with them at that time are the ones that have been born in the wilderness. All the others are dead. The Lord didn't keep your life for nothing. Amen. I said the Lord didn't keep your life for nothing. Amen. He looks at Joshua and he says, Joshua, because you know it, because you heard it, he looks at Joshua and says, Joshua, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. I need this mountain. It's my mountain. Yep. I don't know who I'm talking to here today. But you have a mountain. You're saying, give me this mountain. Mm -hmm. It's mine. Mm -hmm. It's my promise. Mm -hmm. Caleb looks at Joshua. And he's saying, Joshua, I need this mountain. I know I've been delayed for 45 years. I know I've been waiting for it for 45 years. Mm -hmm. I won't wait again. Mm -hmm. I need it now. Amen. Give me this mountain. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is your mountain that you're looking at and saying, God said about this mountain 10 years ago. God said about this promise 5 years ago. There is this door that the Lord spoke about. I need to enter that door now. I need my miracle now. Caleb is not beginning with Joshua. He says, give me this mountain. Mm. Give me this mountain. Until you get to a level where you place your demand, mm -hmm. there are some delays that will never be broken. Mm -hmm. Some of us are too soft for life. <laughs> too soft. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's the way we comfort ourselves. You know, as we're born again, when we want just to be soft, you know, and we don't want to fight for our breakthrough and for our mountains, we, we coin it to look spiritual. There is nothing spiritual about delay. I come to rise against the spirit of delay in the mighty name of Jesus, and I break every delay. Some of you are supposed to have owned some property, but delay has kept you down. I break that spirit of delay in the mighty name of Jesus. Probably there's some people here that are supposed to have been married and you're not yet married I break the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus Christ come on say no more delay, no no more delay. I didn't hear you no more say like you believe it no he placed a demand he placed a demand he said give me this mountain it's mine we're not negotiating about it Two things that I want you to know and then we pray. If you're going to break delay in your life, you have got to recognize what the Lord has already promised. You have to recognize that it is true. This is my blessing. The Lord spoke about it. And it is mine. 
And don't convince yourself. No, what to do with the No, I will not have Musa or Gidevera cana. Nathia would be up. He knew it. My question is Do you know your breakthrough? Do you know what the Lord has promised you? The Bible is full of you, the promises of God. And you don't need no prophet to prophesy to you. You're the greatest prophet of your life. I say, you're the greatest prophet of your life. We're living in days where people are running. All get that mero maodu. Tell yourself. <laughs> and people are getting crazy just because a prophet will call you and tell you your phone number. Now, when I tell you your phone number, then you're going to be You're the greatest prophet of your life. I say, you're the greatest prophet of your life. And some of us, because we don't know, we have nothing to claim. When you know it's your blessing, then you demand. Because it is your right. Listen to me, you're a son in this kingdom. Amen. You're not trying to be. Amen. And if you're a son, then you're a heir. We mogai. You're a son. You're there by right. If you don't understand that, remember the prodigal son. I know kire do the wa kwa naga ido. Idia heto. Nagi soka mushi ogete ona di kwa da go tuika moyo. Kwa da go di tuik tuike ko. Agi dia kiga mira ide ori a hete tia na nemani a hete tia. Na kwa da o duo mo wa go boy a ku ide ori ga go ko kuli ta mo mo na go tuike dia. Agi tuika ko. You're a son. You're not trying to be. Listen to me, there are things that when God does for you, he's not doing you any favor. Mm -hmm. Can I say that and we finish? Yeah. There are things when God does them in your life, he is not doing you any favor. Yes. He's doing it to you because it's your right. Mm -hmm. You're a son. Yeah. But probably, you, I know, okay. Well, listen to me. If you take your child to college, and you pay. No. It's the right of that child. Hey, it's their right to eat. Oh, yes. <laughs> God picked you and he made your son. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So don't stay like you're arraigned on chicken, like you have no right in this kingdom. And the reason the enemy has caused a lot of delay is because we have sons that don't know their right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine you're the man king in a domain. I can get a net out of the other. Todo with Caragao at the way when you are Hey! What I get at the Kurati? Hey, at the Murado, Nyasho Kid and I, they did what they did. What's your aho? And if I do it, they will go to the mother kimono. I can call it, no gay head. What is your call? My tiny dear call. Call it to the other. Call it on a no, you have a week. Call it to the other. Not a tackle. If they are more than that. Can <laughs> 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 Oh, 
45 years, the mountain is there. It is the time he demanded for it that the Bible says, and Joshua gave him that mountain. Amen. It became his inheritance. Amen. There's a mountain God promised you, but it's waiting for you to demand. Amen. There's a mountain that has been waiting for you. And I want us to take two minutes before we leave this place. I don't know what delay has delayed you. I don't know what breakthrough has you been waiting for. I don't know. But you know the Lord promised you this. And even if you never heard it and you read it, that still is promise. You understand what I'm talking about? This is his promise. And if you read it in the Bible, it is your promise. You can demand it. I want you to open your mouth for a minute in the name of Jesus. I want you to place a demand on that situation right now. I want you to be like that joke, that Caleb in the name of Jesus. Say, give me this mountain. Every one of you has at this mountain. Some of your mountains is your breakthrough. Some of the mountains, some of you need is healing. Some of you need a sudden door to open up. Some of you need a sudden favor in a sudden place. That is your mountain. Whatever you're calling a mountain, I don't know what kind of delay. I don't know how long you've been delayed. The children of Israel were delayed 30 years. Joshua Caleb was delayed 45 years. The man was delayed 38 years. I don't know how long you've been delayed. You've been waiting for that miracle. You can ask it and place a demand right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to connect with that word right now. Breaking every delay right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Your delay may not be my delay, but I want you to open up your mouth, connect with faith right now. Breaking every delay right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you have waited for your papers, some of you have waited for certain documents, some of you have waited to go through certain doors, a certain delay has hung around your life. But I come in the name of the Lord, anointed of the Lord tonight to deal with that delay in the mighty name of Jesus they erase your inheritance they erase your promise somewhere and right now in the name of Jesus I rebuke every delay thou spirit of delay I command you care out of the life of the people of God thou spirit of delay I break you right now I break you out of all lies out of all lies out of all marriages out of our children, out of our finances, out of our careers, in the name of Jesus. Every door that we need to enter in 2018, we command power to go through that door. Every favor we need to connect to, we step in it in the name of Jesus. Every breakthrough that the Lord has promised us, we will enjoy it at the right time. In the name of Jesus, we will celebrate at the right time we will celebrate it we will not have to wait another day we will not have to wait another year in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, 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 spirit of the day, get out of our lives, in the name of Jesus, get out of our ministries, get out of everything that pertains to our lives, in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and Joshua blessed Kyrie. My assignment is simple today. I came to bless you that you may take your mountain. I said, I came to bless you. Because the Bible says, and Joshua blessed Kyrie. And he gave him Hebron to be his inheritance. 
I bless you today in the name of the Lord. Amen. I bless your life in the name of Jesus. I bless your ideas. May your dreams become a reality. May the Lord give you grace, give you favor to make more money, to have greater openings. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord do something very quickly so that any delay that was there in your life, you will recover that wasted time. So the glory and to the honor of the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, do we pray and give thanks and everyone shout out Come on, lift your hands, give the Lord a better clap in Jesus' name. Lift your one of your hands and say, from today, no more delay in my life. Say, from today, I will operate in the perfect time of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and God bless you.